Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Wellness Wednesday, and we're here to open your mind. We are living the good life right here on WBOK 1230 AM. We are opening minds to living differently in the world with love, compassion, tolerance, and understanding for ourselves and hopefully everyone else. We do that right here weekdays at 11 AM. You never have to miss a show. Make sure you follow us on all of our social media platforms. That is at TGL Radio Show, at TGL Radio Show, Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And if you would like to join the good life, make sure you give us a call at 504-400-7127. That is 504 504- Four hundred seven one two seven. You can get our rates, our packages right there online at www. Can you guess what it is? TGLRadioShow.com. That is www.TGLRadioShow.com. You can go online literally right now and check it out and become a part of the family because that's the good life. What other family would you want to be a part of? Right? I know. And, right, right? This is the only family I know of. <laughs> If y'all know that voice, if if you if you are our regular listeners, and I hope that you are, you know that voice. That is Bashan Jordan of Tiger Rock Nola. He is in the studio with me. Of course, today yep. is Wellness Wednesday. We are get you, we are gonna get you ready, mind, body, and soul, literally today, because we will have Bobby Clark Alexander from the ATL. She'll be coming in for the third segment, which will be about eleven forty. So make sure you stay tuned for that. But of course, it's mind, body, and soul, and I have Bashan Jordan. So Bashan, if they want to get their body right, and we're yes. gonna get a little bit into specifically what those types are yeah. i know you're like what is she talking about you got to stay you got to stay tuned because that's mm-hmm. the second segment i'm gonna tell you what you are and, and how it works uh, but if they want to contact you how can they do that Bashan? um won't you f- i would love for everybody to follow me on follow me now. or follow us on facebook um it's uh, tiger rock nola um you can <laughs> go to facebook.com slash tiger rock nola and follow, follow us so uh, please do that um, and on instagram the same thing tiger rock nola uh, just Blow like, him up. Yeah, yeah, please. You know, just give us a little follow. Get his numbers and, up. Um, you want your numbers you know, like mine, Exactly. Huh? I'm trying to be like Eileen <laughs> Carl with 50,000 people following <laughs> you. You know, so yes, please mm-hmm. uh, go ahead and. Uh, uh, hook us up real quick. Hook us up real quick. Yes, hook us you. up real quick. Well, that's what I am going to do this morning. So many times we don't know exactly why we do the things that we do. And yeah. so I found this article on BrianTracy.com. It's understanding your subconscious mind. You know, we're like, you know, we are mentally we do the same things over and over again. We're like, why do we do it? Why do we get stuck? Why is it hard to change? What What is going on? Well, we have to remember we have a conscious and a subconscious. And, you know, we got. Mm. So anyway, I found this article that really kind kind of uh, broke it down for me and I really enjoyed it. And so I wanted to read the article to each and every one of you and then we can kind of discuss it a little bit because it opened my mind. So hopefully it does the same for you. And it's called Understanding Your Subconscious Mind. It reads, your subconscious mind is like a huge memory bank. Its capacity is virtually unlimited. It permanently stores everything that ever happens to you. It reads, by the time you reach age 21, you've already permanently stored more than 100 times the contents of the entire Encyclopedia Britannica. Can you imagine that? Wow. But think about what you learn just from zero to six. Yeah. You learn everything. You learn a language. You know how to function, how to move your body. Like, there's so much stuff that we learn that we don't even pay attention to it they go on to say that under hypnosis older people can often remember with perfect clarity events from 50 years before your unconscious memory is virtually perfect it is your conscious recall that is suspect and i like how they use that word because that would be something that i would say but like your conscious is suspect (laughs) <laughs> you need to you need to think about that. And I really wanted to make sure that I said that in, in that 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 fell on your spirit. Your conscious recall is what is suspect because how many of us rely on our conscious? Yeah. Aha. I'm just saying mm. the function of your subconscious mind is to store and retrieve data. Its job is to ensure that you respond exactly the way you are programmed. I'm going to repeat that. The function of your subconscious mind is to store and retrieve data. Its job is to ensure that you respond exactly the way you are programmed. Hmm. Your subconscious mind makes everything you say and do fit a pattern consistent with your self-concept or your master program. Your subconscious is subjective. It does not think or reason independently. It merely obeys the commands 
it receives from your conscious mind. So your, com- your, your subconscious is not reasoning independently. It is what it is. It merely obeys a command it receives from your conscious mind. Just as your conscious mind can be thought of as a gardener planting seeds, your subconscious mind can be thought of as the garden or fertile soil in which the seeds germinate and grow. Your conscious mind commands and your subconscious mind obeys. I want you all to really get that. Think about that. Your conscious mind commands and your subconscious mind obeys. Your subconscious mind is a unique, is an unquestioning servant. Unquestioning servant. And I, I really want, I'm, I'm really saying this for our, our mind, body, and soul today when we get into different things on on why things change and how difficult it is to change behaviors because we, we're programmed. Mm. Your subconscious mind is an unquestioning servant that works day and night to make your behavior Fit a pattern consistent with your emotionalized thoughts. Emotionalized. What do we run on sometimes? Our emotions. emotions. Emotionalized thoughts, hopes, and desires. Your subconscious mind grows either flowers or weeds in the garden of your life, whichever you plant by the mental equivalence you create. Y'all get that? What we put our emotion toward, what the stuff that we constantly think about that is being implanted into us, and then we create patterns off of that. Hmm. hmm. Are you getting that? Right. I'm just I'm just trying to break it down a little bit for you. Your subconscious mind has what is called a homeostatic impulse. It keeps your body temperature at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit, just as it keeps you breathing regularly and keeps your heart beating in a certain rate. Through your auto autonomic nervous system it maintains a balance among the hundreds of chemicals in your billions of cells that your entire physical machine functions in complete harmony most of the time your subconscious mind also practices homeostasis in your mental realm by keeping you thinking and acting in a manner consistent to what you have done and said in the past your subconscious mind practice homeostasis by keeping you thinking and acting in a manner consistent to what you have done in the past. You know, sometimes people just think, oh, it's, it, no, this is real. Yeah. And I want you to understand that it's real. <laughs> so sometimes, you know, this week is understanding. So I wanted you to have an understanding of why you do the things you do so you can move on it. Your subconscious mind causes you to feel emotionally and physically uncomfortable whenever you attempt to do anything new or different or to change any of your established patterns of behavior. Now, when did you establish those patterns and behavior? In the past. I'm going to repeat that. Your subconscious mind causes you to feel emotionally and physically uncomfortable whenever you attempt to do anything new or different, or to change any of your established patterns of behavior. You can feel your subconscious pulling you back toward your comfort zone each time you try something new. Mm. Even thinking about doing something different from what you're accustomed to will make you feel tense and uneasy. Even thinking about it, doing something different from what you're accustomed to doing will make you feel tense and uneasy. Now, now where now? Now, let's remember what it said earlier. Mm -hmm. Because we're connected to our past. Yeah. And so when we're doing something different, that's uneasy or uncomfortable. It triggers us. Mm. Superior men and women are always stretching themselves, pushing themselves out of their comfort zones. They are very aware how quickly the comfort zone in any area can become a rut. They know that complacency is the great enemy of creativity and future possibilities. And finally, it says, for you to grow, to get out of your comfort zone, you have to be willing to feel awkward and uncomfortable do new things the first few times. If it's worth doing well, it's worth doing poorly until you get a feel for it. It's going to happen. You, it, it's not going to feel good at first. Yeah. It, and and once we can understand that, you're like, oh, but it doesn't feel good. But you know it's right for you. Stop going off your feelings. You know it's right for you. If They said until you develop a new comfort zone at a new higher level of competence, you got to keep going. Hmm. Good stuff. You like that, huh? Well, I, when I read it, I was like, this fell on my spirit. I yeah. had to share because, and I oh, oh, speaking of it, and with uh, Wellness Wednesday, I can only, I can speak for myself. And then you had uh, another example. Mm-hmm. I'm juicing, and I've been trying to, like, 
I mean, I've been juicing for a while, but I've been trying to just do like straight juicing. Mm-hmm. I'm on day three, y'all. I was like, all I want is a po' boy, like real, <laughs> like true story. And I'm like, and I'm reading this and I'm like, now I know why. Yeah. Because it's uncomfortable from what I've done in my past. You know, we've done diets. We've done, we've done, um, I've done the day no fast. That wasn't even terrible. But juicing, like where you are not chewing for days yeah. and days and days, is something different. It is outside of my comfort zone. I have absolutely never done it. And so I am being pulled into my past of thoughts of, because before I went on this, I didn't even want a po' boy. It wasn't even like a thought in my mind. It was never, not like, they, like you said, they aren't on every corner store. Like, I didn't even want it. But just because I'm doing something different, it's yeah. like, oh, you want that. Yeah. No, I don't. Yeah. It's just my past pulling at me to make me go backwards when I want to go forwards. So, you know, once we have an understanding of why we think the way we think and when we do have those uncomfortable feelings, don't let it halter us because we do. I know I do. I'm like, oh, well, it's uncomfortable. Maybe it's not what I'm supposed to be doing. Yeah. Hmm. That is the okie doke. You are supposed to be doing it yeah. unless it's and I mean, and now come on. Let's be rational. You know, if you're if you're banging your head against a wall, you know, you're not supposed to be doing that because it hurts. But if <laughs> right, you know what I'm saying? But, you know, walking, you know, or or. Or, uh, I don't know, trying an, out a new exercise, trying out, you know, just breaking a habit. Yeah. You know, one of the most uncomfortable, not uncomfortable, but you hear like cigarette smokers oh, yeah. going through withdrawals, anything that you're, you're going through that withdrawal. And that's that's your past trying to pull you back like Mm-mm, this is comfortable. You have you have set a pattern in your mind. You have programmed yourself for A, B and C. And now you want to go from, you know, D to Z. They're like, uh, uh-uh, I'm, I'm cool with A, B and C. But you know that your your breakthrough, you know that your your future, your passion, your purpose is on the other side of that. So we are going to have we going to have to walk through some level of uncomfort to get there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It, it, it is what it is. Yeah, I I'm mean, going to have to not chew. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm kind of like I'm just thinking just now. Like actually, I'm my past right now. I mean, um, is actually, uh, uh, I guess, helping me to um, make better decisions. Like if, I'm trying to explain it real quick. Mm-hmm. So like, so obviously, when I think about my past, like of how I used to be as far as uh, uh, being out of shape and things like that, mm-hmm. and not looking a certain way uh, compared to where I am now. You know, that actually is help motivating me now to uh, push myself a little bit harder to uh, reach another goal in my life, you know, that I'm trying to get to, you know, because I kind of fell off the bandwagon a little bit, you know, not really uh, pushing myself and working out as much as I wanted to mm-hmm. and, and really kind of slacking on being more so the, the healthy eating lifestyle, kind of like what you're doing right now with the juicing. You know, I kind of have to look back at my past at, at what I did before to get me to where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. And, and, and so I kind of have to kind of replay those things a little bit as far as, you know, not eating uh, certain foods at a certain time at, at, at night and not eating X amount of foods late at night. And that's kind of where I've been kind of struggling at a little bit in the past recently. It's just, you know, just doing things that I kind of strayed away from. So, um, but yeah, I mean, but I definitely agree, you know, with everything you say, because that, I mean, because, <laughs> right. I mean, you know, even looking, I'm I'm not the great, I'm not very good in speaking in public, right? I don't like speaking in public, but. You're just on the air every week. Apparently. Yeah, but, but that's that's <laughs> different, though, so, because I'm, this is Nobody has to look at you. Well, and that, <laughs> we're but, in a safe uh, but at the same time, I, I can speak comfortably about things that I'm passionate with, yes. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And that goes for everybody. I mean, if, mm-hmm. you, if you're not comfortable talking about something that you're not really familiar with, then, yeah, you're going to probably feel uncomfortable going in front of talking in front of just one person about it, let alone, you know, hundreds or thousands of people about right. it. So, right. But it's something you're comfortable and passionate about. It, it doesn't matter who you're standing in front of. You, you can – it's just easy. But, you know, just thinking about, you know, when I was a, a child, you know, going in front of – uh, uh, classrooms, you know, doing little projects, I would struggle to, you know, <laughs> so that's kind of getting out of your comfort zone, being able to yes. this is getting me out of out my of comfortable, comfort you know, so that was, I mean, when the first day we, I came here, I was like, oh Lord, what am I getting myself <laughs> into? There's no way in the world I could do this. What are you, you getting know? yourself into? Yeah. Well, well, it was a habit. Yeah. And you're breaking that exactly. habit. And, and look at you now. You I'm can proud just, of myself. Right. I, me too. Cause I remember where you started. I remember. I'm, I, I love it. And so, you know, with that being said, we're trying to get an understanding of who we are. And when you have an understanding, it gives you the ability to act. And yeah. so I want you to remember that all of your habits and thinking, or I should say all of your habits of thinking and acting are stored in your subconscious mind. It has memorized all of your comfort zones and works to keep you in them. 
What are you going to do to open your mind and to make those changes today? We are here on Wellness Wednesday. I'm your host, Eileen. We have the Sean's Jordan of Tiger Rock Nola in here with me. We're going to figure out how to change our body when we get right back. We're going to figure out all of our body types. Have you heard about an endomorph, a mesomorph, an ectomorph? You know what I'm talking about? Huh? Yeah. We're going to break those down when we get back because you have to know your body type in order to change. you got to understand yourself. It's Wellness Wednesday. I will be right back. Isagenics is one of the fastest growing companies in the world because their products work. Their solutions and culture has redefined the health and wellness industry. Science backs their products and statistics back their success. But it's the people who make them successful. And I, Eileen Carter, have joined the Isagenics revolution. I've used the products and followed their system, and I'd swear by them. I'm on my journey of transformation and invite you to join Join me and try Isagenics today. Challenge yourself and change your life. Find information and testimonials at thegoodliferadioshow.isagenics.com. Thegoodliferadioshow.isagenics.com. Thegoodliferadioshow.isagenix.com. Order yours today. Hi, I'm Henry Jolly, your relationship expert and nationally certified counselor. Everyone at some point in their life goes through struggles. I'm a firm believer that people have the ability to will themselves into good situations, but sometimes they may need some assistance. Being a loving husband, father, and successful businessman by having a passion for the counseling profession has allowed me to gain experience with a variety of these struggles. Let's work together to achieve your individual, family, or marital potential. Come and see me at the New Orleans Growth Center, located at 3712 MacArthur Boulevard on the West Bank in Suite 209. You can reach me at 504-259-8671 or by email, which is henry.jolly at yahoo.com. Thanks for your time, and I'm looking forward to working with you soon. Hi, this is Bishop Henry Bolden. I'm so excited to have this opportunity to personally extend to you, your family, and your friends this invitation to join me for worship. That's right. Come experience God on a whole new level. Join me at Perfecting Life Church this week. Make weekend plans right now. Join me uh, for our Tuesday night life service each and every Tuesday night at 6.45 p.m. Only 45 minutes. Come as you are dressed comfortably. Bring your family and friends with you. Also, don't forget our electrifying Sunday morning worship experience at 9.45. That's right. Come as you are and watch God do something incredible for you. Join me. Perfecting Life Church, 2025 Whitney Avenue in the beautiful city of Gretna, Louisiana. Again, that's 2025 Whitney Avenue in Gretna, Louisiana. Listen, Perfecting Life Church is a place you can call home. Bring your faith, your friends, and your family. God bless you. Come on, roll with the RTA. You ask for more, and now there's new bus shelters for your comfort. 2,000 new bus signs. More information at your fingertips with online and SMS texting. And more ways to buy fares. Go to NORTA.com to explore. From New Orleans East to the Lower Nine, we got you covered. Dirt Town, Uptown, Downtown, to the Algiers Point, and all in between. Rolling for everybody, everywhere. That RTA keeps New Orleans rolling. There's a miracle healing crusade coming to New Orleans. God is still working miracles, and he has a miracle for you. Get ready for the miracle crusade against cancer beginning Saturday, August 26th at 7 p.m., then Sunday, Monday and Tuesday, August 27th through the 29th. It's two services, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. at Light City Church. The CDC reported new cancer diagnosis at 1.5 million a year and more than 500,000 persons dying from this disease. Are you suffering from cancer? Come get healed at the Miracle Crusade Against Cancer with David E. Taylor. All seats are free, but you must pre-register at eventbrite.com. Search Miracle Crusade or download the Light City app and register there. Pastors, get preferred seating when registering with your group of 25 or less. Community groups of 
any kind are asked to register together as well. Come, see cancer, diabetes, and debilitating diseases cured. It's August 26th through the 29th. The Miracle Crusade Against Cancer with David E. Taylor at Light City Church at 6117 St. Claude, where Chief Apostle Leonard Lucas pastors. W-B-O-K, real talk for real times. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to The Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Wellness Wednesday, and we're here to open your mind. We are living the good life right here on WBOK 1230 AM. We are opening minds to living differently in the world with love, compassion, tolerance, and understanding for ourselves and everyone else. We do that right here weekdays at 11 AM. You never have to miss a show. Why? Because we are live on Facebook right now. We are live on Instagram. You got to be there. Instagram only lasts 24 hours, so you got to be quicker than that. And on Facebook, it is there for, for life, I guess, until, yeah for life so make sure you share it sharing is caring and if you want to join the good life make sure you give us a call 504-400-7127 and you can look up our rates and packages and actually you can order it right there online you don't even have to talk to me if you really don't want to i mean at least not initially but who wouldn't want to talk to us sean I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But go online. Yeah, yeah. Go online. www tglradioshowthegoodliferadioshow.com tglradioshow.com because it's the good life now we are here on wellness wednesday we have been talking about understanding this week understanding this week so i wanted you to understand your mind understand how your conscious and especially your subconscious works and kind of you know it, it 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 just listens it just responds it's obedient but we have to feed it something. Yeah. We have to feed it better for it to change our, our habits and our thoughts and our patterns. Mm. You know, so if we understand how it works, then we can change it. And speaking of changes, you need to understand uh, it is Wellness Wednesday. We have to understand our body types if we want to change that as well. That's so, why I call you Dr. Carter, you know, because, <laughs> I mean, it's just so much knowledge, you know, it's just amazing. I'm a researcher. Uh, <laughs> I read. Yeah. I like to read. Lucky me, well, because good. if I didn't, I'd have a real see, problem see doing a does. radio Show. That's amazing. <laughs> right. I'm start right. Reading. We need to know which body type we are so that we can diet and exercise correctly for that type. You ever had people who, you know, like, I diet all the time, it's just not working. Yeah. I exercise all the time, it's just not working. If we understand how our body works, we can make better progress. You know, it shouldn't, not saying it shouldn't be that hard because obviously it's a little bit harder as yeah, we get older due to yeah. life and circumstances. But, you know, you know, some people think that an ideal body is like some of those thin models and like, that your body type just isn't that it's not even attainable but you are like working so hard for it and getting discouraged and really like you know doing doing harm to your body and then you have guys who want to be you know this huge bodybuilder and it's like your body isn't made for that it well it will look it can never look like that yeah and accepting like who we are so that we can live the good life so there are three different body types and I'm going to uh, break them down for you. So the three are ectomorph, mesomorph, and endomorph. And I'm getting this from supplements.com. Don't think this is just me knowing this. I'm, I'm, I'm reading y'all. It's <laughs> a true story. Um, and I'm gonna. And, and what I liked about this article is it wasn't very. I don't want to say medical, but it was. It was more. It gave a more yeah, uh, simpler. A like, simpler. Yeah example like for people listening it's not you know i'll get yeah. I'll, i'm gonna explain to you the ectomorph they say is generally a fragile frame thin maybe flat chested a delicate build a young appearance tall lightly uh, muscled a stoop shouldered large brain has trouble gaining weight muscle growth takes longer for an ectomorph uh you know Typically skinny, small frame, lean muscle mass. They don't gain weight easily. Y'all know those people. Lucky them. Or or do you think they're lucky? Mm-hmm. They think, you know, they may not think they're lucky. I knew people who were, in my opinion, ectomorphs who used to, like, wish they could they gain, gain weight. weight. Everybody yeah. wants what somebody else yep. has. Exactly. Well, they say for an ectomorph, 
that uh, an ectomorph should concentrate on gaining weight in the form of good lean muscle tissue. They say some women that are too thin may also want to put on a little fat to look more feminine. But of course, that is in the eye of the beholder. I am not telling you what to do. You have to do what's comfortable for you and what is appropriate between you and your doctor. Weight training should be done, but not too often or for too long each session. So this yeah. this type of a body type, an ectomorph, should do it in shorter um, shorter periods. They say short but intense sessions are best. And it, you have to know because what if you didn't know that and you're doing all these long, intense workouts and you're not seeing anything, you're really just doing damage to your body. Hmm. Yeah. Knowing your body, having an understanding can can lead to the good life. Y'all, I'm just trying to help. <laughs> they said weight should be fairly heavy and workout pace slower Long rest periods between sets. The goal being to break down the muscle just enough, but not enough to get your heart rate up too high. So you aren't burning calories that can be used later to rebuild muscle. They say your diet should be high in calories, good food, not junk food, and you should eat more than you're used to and often. You know, those people who are like, I eat all the time and I never gain weight. Well, this is you. You're an ectomorph. Mm -hmm. Diet should be high. Oh, wait. Aerobic and other activities, sports, dancing, etc., should be kept to a minimum. That's not your type of activity because you will lose it so mm. quickly. If, if, I mean, now if you want to lose it, then you know, do that. Um, but they say at least, you know, if you're happy with your weight and you feel like you, that's all that matters. Yeah. But if you were, if you're like, why can't I ever lose weight? Doing all those high sport cardios. Yeah. Is just going to keep the weight off of you. Yeah. So you're not going to do as much cardio, uh, vascular ex- exercises. So you're going to probably, want to incorporate more weight training um, in your exercises, kind of like um, uh, HIIT training, what it's called, high-intensity interval training, um, where you're still doing some cardio, but you incorporate some weights in there. And, you know, some people, even even in that case, they're not trying to necessarily be really bulky, muscular, but mm-hmm. they want to look like they have some size on them. And, and so just doing some type of weight training is good. You don't have to do – if you're trying to – if you really want to get bulky, then you want to increase the – the amount of weight, and I think that's what they're that's saying there. Just do add a little bit of weight to your training. Um, could be a couple of dumbbells, things like that. Um, you know, but that'll help uh, kind of put some size on you a little bit. Put some size mm-hmm. on you. And so that is an ectomorph. We yep. are going through the three body types, the ectomorph, the mesomorph, and the endomorph. Yep. And so, you know, we just want to break it down so you have an understanding of your body type and how you lose and gain weight. So, you know, you know once you have an understanding of your body, then you can do it the right way exactly. and not harm your body. Yep. So the second one is mesomorph, mesoforth. They say it's an athletic build, a hard muscular body, um, overly mature appearance, a rectangular shape, hourglass shape for women. And so I'm trying to give you both because y- y'all hear hard muscular body like huh well mm, yeah for the guys it's an hourglass shape uh for women Mm -hmm. you know thick skinned upright posture gains or lose weights easily sometimes grows muscle quickly they say um uh, your workout type will be cardio and weight training and responds best to weight training that's interesting Hmm, maybe i need to add some weight training and they say watch your calorie intake now, see, I'm glad I read this. There I learned because I think I'm a mesomorph, y'all. That's just TMI. Um, the mesomorph has a naturally fit body, but to maintain it or improve it, they should exercise and diet correctly for their type. Because if you don't, it will not be a naturally fit body. A strength training can be done more often and for longer sessions than would be good for an ectomorph. But you must still be careful not to overdo it. You should train with moderate to heavy weights and at a moderate pace, not resting too long between sets it goes on to say you will find you gain muscle quite easily some women and even men might not want to look too bulky but this won't happen suddenly they say when you're happy with your muscle size simple simply train to maintain it they say stick to a good healthy diet to keep you lean and muscular and watch for any slow creeping fat gains so this is usually what well, I'm gonna go through it. Engage in and enjoy aerobic activity, sports, etc., but do not overdo it. Many mesomorph believes they are ectomorphs because they have a hard time putting on muscle mass. But it's really that they are trying too hard and are in constant state of overtraining. So you can overtrain. Yeah. Hmm. It seems like these are the people who are like, you know, they've been good for a general part of their life and just weight has crept on throughout their life, and then they yeah. end up being heavy, and they're like, well, what happened? Well, you just you know, kind of didn't keep it up. Exactly. Yeah, I mean, some people, like, 
uh, that maybe started in high school, you know, whether they played sports or something like that, and, mm-hmm. and they incorporate the weight training in their sports early in their life. And like you said, just kind of consistently did it for a while, but then kind of maybe it's like, oh, I'm at a point I, I'm comfortable. And oh, it kind of like, right. it kind of slowly fall off a little bit. And it's like, oh, well, you know, I know what I need to do to get back into that position. But they're kind of naturally built already. Right. So it, it doesn't really take as much effort. You know, as for as maybe somebody like the next uh, type of body shot. You know, you know where so. you see this a lot and yeah. people make fun. And I'm really not making fun, but I'm trying to give you a visual. A lot of your athletes. Athletes, yeah. Exactly. Because they're training Football so much. Players, and then, yeah, yeah. And then you're like. Once they fall off the wagon, yeah. that's it. Like Because they're you know, not doing it. Conti- like, yeah. You look at treating any, the way that they usually. All do. athletes that, you know, look at them in, you know, let's say towards the end of their you know, their career. Or I should, should, let me start the beginning of their career or during their career and then towards the end of their career, they kind of, you see them kind of slowly. And it, yes, obviously age has a part to do it, but mm-hmm. some of these guys are still young, you know, but once they stop training, you can forget about it. It's over with, you know. Yeah, but, and, and, and it says here that they were actually kind of in a state of overtraining. Overtraining. But since their body got accustomed exactly. to that. So what we talked about in the first segment, yep. their subconscious got accustomed to that. That was their new program that yep. when they couldn't unprogram it. Yeah. Because, that, well, they didn't unprogram program. it, I should say. Yeah. They exactly. just started walking into a new lifestyle. Yep. But yeah. you got to unprogram, yeah. y'all. You got to. Mm-hmm. And last but not least, the endomorph. The endomorph uh, goes on to say that kind of a soft body, a little bit, um, you know, I don't like that word. Underdeveloped <laughs> muscles, a round shape, an overdeveloped digestive system. They have trouble losing weight, generally gains muscle easily, which I think is very interesting. Mm-hmm. It goes, wait, it says a soft and round body. They say typically short and stocky, but. Is it really just only? Well, we'll go see. They say gains muscle easily, gains fat very easily, finds it hard to lose fat, slow metabolism, large shoulders. They say your workout type should always do cardio training and weight training. Watch calorie intake. So to go into full details, the endomorph's biggest concern should be the losing of fat and adopting a lifestyle that keeps it off. Y'all, you have to know which one is yours. Mm -hmm. Because if you're living a lifestyle of an ectomorph and you're an endomorph, it is not going to work for you. So the endomorph's biggest concern should be the losing of fat and adopting a lifestyle that keeps it off. Strength training should be done to get a better muscle-to-fat ratio and therefore improve metabolism. Use moderate weights as a fast training pace. They say very little rest between sets and exercise to keep your heart rate up, but not super high. This will aid in burning fat while you are putting on muscle. It's more difficult for an endomorph to overtrain than other body types. Maybe I'm an endomorph. Hmm. Many endomorphs, like, I don't feel like it's ever over. Many endomorphs are just naturally very strong. Ah, that I am. Yeah. Um, so you can get used to that, used to taking that, get, I can't even read, can get used to that to your advantage and focus on more power lifting and you'll really excel. I did really well in, um, never mind. Um, and they say, take careful notice to your joints. Take care of your joints as you typically will wear them out faster than any other body type. That's very important because as we age, you know, yeah. people are like, oh, my joints. Well, you, if you are an endomorph, they are telling you that you're, you need to ha- pay special attention to your joints. Um, they do go out faster than other body types. They say you should, you should lower your calorie intake, but not starve yourself. They said, but you need to lower your calorie intake and you should eat Frequent but small meals. Mm. Frequent but small meals. What I like about this is they tell you how to eat for each body. Yeah. They say sugar, sweets, and junk food should be eliminated completely Ooh. from your diet. Good God, Lord Ooh. have mighty. Y'all, I don't want to be one of these. <laughs> I'm just See, I'm, they say yeah. engage daily in cardio activity like brisk walking, running, rowing, biking, etc. So if you are an endomorph, they say you need to lower your calorie intake, not to a starving point. You know, people get excited and they like to go from 2,000 to 1,200. Mm-hmm. Don't do that. You're going to hurt yourself. And you should eat frequent but small meals. Sugar, sweets, and junk food should really be eliminated from your diet because you do gain weight easily. It's what your body type is. And engage daily in cardio. Cardio activity like brisk walking, running, rowing, buying. Maybe I'm an endomorph. I'm mm. an I'm an endo, endo, endomorph. Are you? Yeah. I I, I mean I I, I'm, I mean I kind of have an athletic built, you know, so I kind of had the mesomorph a little bit, but I feel like my overall my whole body type is an endomorph because I really have to watch out, you know, my calorie intake and um, definitely put the, you know do the cardio and you know, incorporate the weight training. So 
Um, I you think know, I'm an endomorph. Yeah, I mean, it just. But it says you can be a mixture of. You can be a mixture of both. Yeah. You know, you know, once you get to a point, you know, yeah, you can then you say I'm a mesomorph because now once you get like I'm kind of a in. A little bit of between right now, you know. I have, but here's what I've always had the athletic even, body type. You even know? though you are an endomorph, does not mean that you can't have an athletic body exactly. type. Exactly. If you, if you, if you just have to know what type of body you have, because exactly. once you know that you are an endomorph yeah. and you follow these these tips, it could be then you become, can have yes. an athletic body, yeah. but you still know that yeah. I still am an endomorph. endomorph. So, so if I go back to yes. these habits, yes. it's going to go back to be an unhealthy state. Yep, I got to continue doing what right? I did to get to that point. Right. You know, and that's what I was talking about earlier, where I had to kind of re- remember how I got to the point where I'm at now mm-hmm. so I don't go back to the old me. You know, so, yeah. So right. you got to stay on it. You got to stay on top of your game a little bit. Hmm. Got to open your mind to living differently in the world. And Endo hopefully we up. did a little bit of that for you all today. We wanted to just break down the body types and exactly how they worked with regard to, you know, uh, losing weight, building a little bit of uh, muscle mass. Because you need muscle mass for a healthy body. To keep your to keep your posture, you know, to hold up your your bones, you know, for yeah. your lifetime. So people like don't like to hear about weight training sometimes, but we need it, y'all. We need it. Yeah. Get a little cardio in. Get a little weight training, depending on which one you are. I'm actually going to copy this and put it on my Facebook page. So yeah. follow us at, at TGL Radio Show, uh, TGL Radio Show on Facebook. Make sure you go there and you can see which body type you are and and how you need to maybe adjust your lifestyle or your uh, your diet so that, you know, we can all live the good life. It's understanding, y'all. We are understanding. We're going to take a quick break. Bashan's Jordan is leaving me. I don't understand why. I'm sorry. He might have to go do a class or something. Please you got to go do a class. Yes. Fine. <laughs> Fine. Leave me. It's a good life, y'all. Wellness Wednesday. We'll be right back with Bobby Clark Alexander from the ATL. Do you need to sell your home fast? You should call NOLA Homes Project and join the hundreds of motivated sellers that receive big paychecks for their homes. We're part of a large group of experienced real estate developers who are currently looking for homes in your area. It doesn't matter the reason, inheriting unwanted property, facing foreclosure, problem tenants, we can make a fair offer on your home within 24 hours, close very quickly, and we buy in as as is condition. Also, if you ever thought about making money flipping homes right here in the local area, then you should call NOLA Homes Project and join the area's number one real estate mentoring program. Earn while you learn our system on how to find properties to flip, how to evaluate deals quickly, and how to use other people's money to fund your real estate deals. In fact, if the property looks good for a rehab, we'll put up 100% of the money for your deals. Call NOLA Homes Project today at 504 322 1536 Three two two one five three six, or go to nolahomesproject.com. Hi, I'm Dr. Tammy Lewis Wilborn, owner and chief clinical officer of Wilborn Clinical Services and founder and producer of the annual Black Women's Wellness Conference. Wilborn Clinical Services provides professional and culturally responsive clinical services to meet the needs of a diverse community. Located in the historic Farmore community, we are minutes away from downtown New Orleans. If you're an individual, couple, or family looking for counseling in a warm, non-judgmental environment, call 504-509-3995. Are your pre-licensed counselor looking for clinical supervision, interested in professional and personal development opportunities, or need an experienced consultant, call Wilborn Clinical Services at 504-509-3995. Find us on the web at www.wilbornclinicalservices.com. Follow us on Facebook at Wilborn Clinical Services. Do it today because at Wilborn Clinical Services, we build healthy community one client at a time. businesses play an important role in society and LNR Security is no different. LNR Security delivers safety and comfort to our neighborhoods, events, apartment communities, conventions, work sites, festivals, and your business. LNR Security can be reached at 504-943-3191 to ensure the safety of your employees, customers, family, friends, and you. LNR Security
Security has made its mark in the security arena for over 37 years and will faithfully continue that tradition. Call today for your personalized consultation to ensure your security needs are met. LNR Security differentiates itself by creating partnerships with our clients and guards. We are now hiring armed and unarmed guard professionals, retired military, sheriffs, and PD to grow with us and impact our community. Be a part of the change with LNR Security. Call us now at 504-943-3191. Come on, roll with the RTA. You ask for more, and now there's new bus shelters for your comfort. 2,000 new bus signs. More information at your fingertips with online and SMS texting. And more ways to buy fares. Go to NORTA.com to explore. From New Orleans East to the Lower Nine, we got you covered. Dirt Town, Uptown, Downtown, to the Algiers Point, and all in between. Rolling for everybody, everywhere. That RTA keeps New Orleans rolling. Nearly 35,000 people in Louisiana are diagnosed with diabetes each year. Our goal at Aetna Better Health of Louisiana is to help you take control of your diabetes. Our case management program provides education, text messages, gift cards, appointment reminders, and blood glucose tracking. Open enrollment is June 30th through August 30th. So if you're eligible for Medicaid, choose Aetna Better Health of Louisiana by calling Healthy Louisiana at 1-855-229-6848. That's 1-855-229-6848. Or visit www.myplan.healthy.la.gov. You are now listening to the radio station that's keeping it real. WBOK 1230 AM, where it's real talk for real time. Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome back to A Good Life with me, Eileen. We are here on Wellness Wednesday, and we're here to open your mind. We are living the good life right here on WBOK 1230 AM. We are opening minds to living differently in the world with love, compassion, tolerance and understanding for ourselves and hopefully everyone else we do that right here weekdays at 11 a.m you never have to miss a show make sure you tune in and follow us on all of our social media platforms that is at tgl radio show at tgl radio show instagram facebook and twitter because it's the good life if you would like to join you have an event you have a uh what else you have an event you have a business you have a corporation whatever if you feel like your core values are uh, are in in line with the good life please give us a call 504-400-7127 let's partner let's work together to reach each and every one of you out there now understanding ourselves we are uh trying to get uh bobby clark alexander on the phone from the atl i know there was a little bit of technical difficulty so we may not be able to get her this morning but our conversation today is understanding understanding or i should say this week has been understanding and we got into a lot of understanding ourselves yesterday understanding ourselves so today we're going to get into understanding other people some stuff that we just don't want to do sometimes because we want to just take it for face value we want to be like "Mm, no you know they're off and just keep going on but if it's somebody who is in your circle somebody that you have to deal with, somebody that you have talked to on a regular basis, whether it be a family member. It could be your children. You can't get rid of them, right? (laughs) Or it could be your, um, especially in their teen years, or it could be your spouse, your significant other, somebody you're dating. You're like, "Why why do they do things the way they do? How do we understand people and their actions? Um, You know, Whenever somebody comes late to an appointment, you know, sometimes, and I said that the other, I said that Monday morning, you know, you might think that they are just, you know, they're, they're being uh, disrespectful or, you know, they're not uh, understanding or appreciating your time. 
maybe if if it's somebody in your family and they're always late, like maybe there's a little something, there's a little background to that. Maybe there is an issue or or something that is going on, you know, that has a, a contributing factor. There is a link there if it is something that they're doing consistently. So we want to open our mind to that. So there's a few points that we want to look at with regarding to understand people. We want to look beyond their actions and look deep, too. You want to look deep beyond their actions. Don't just look for, you know, the surface, but try to look at the intentions behind them, even if the actions seem, you know, out the box. I was talking to somebody the other day and and they hurt people. But they were like, but my intentions are good. I never have an intention to hurt people. I was like, you may not have an intention to hurt people, but you hurt people. And she was like, but I didn't intend to. But that's what happens. So you have to be able to take a look back and be like, okay, I don't mean to hurt people, but I am. I need to acknowledge that and accept that and find out why I am hurting people. What am I doing? Why am I continuing to do it? Because you don't have the intention to it. The intention isn't there. So there's something that is behind that action or something that is behind, you know, that a connection to the past or something that happened that is keeping this this cycle going on. Um, we want to understand, uh, number two, the unmet needs that are key to understanding people. Goals, you know, things that they have been driven to do or maybe unmet needs that the person develops at an early age can be the key to understanding that person. And we had a, a conversation about this a couple weeks back and we didn't get fully in depth, but really understanding our partners and really understanding the people who are we are in relationships. And I don't mean just like surface, like, oh, you know, how would you grow up? You have, you have three siblings and, you know, y'all grew up on a farm and a picket white fence and you, you both parents worked, whatever. I mean, really understanding their life story. Did they have... You know, uh, did they have trouble with a teacher? Did they ha- and, and what did that situation look like and how did they affect them for their lives? Were they the oldest in the family? A lot of time our birth order really affects who we are. And that's going to be one of our conversations for tomorrow. I'm going to bring the book, the birth order book, because your birth order can totally affect who you are. And once you understand that, because so many times the first person in the birth order, you know, they were uh, required you know, perception, reality, or, or maybe not to be the perfect child. They did everything right. Everything came so easily to them. You know, they were, you know, they maybe have had uh, more attention or more strict attention per se. And then you had the middle child who was, or the second child who came underneath them. And then maybe you had the youngest. How many times did it be like, oh, the youngest gets away with everything. Maybe your parents were tired or maybe not. Or maybe that's just the perception from the older one because they didn't, that youngest child didn't have to feel the pressure of being perfect. You know, there's so many different dynamics. And if there are large gaps in your in your family, if you have, you know, a first child and then there's like a, a an eight year gap and then you have two younger children, those children, they may they may be siblings, but they grew up differently. That first child actually grew up like an only child. There are so many different ways. And we need to understand, you know, how p- the dynamics of people, especially the people who are around us. You know, we meet people each and every day, but really understanding the people around us will open your mind. And actually, it allows for forgiveness. It helps you with forgiveness. When you understand why somebody did the things that they did, when you understand why somebody may have lied to you, maybe they had a situation in their past and and, and, and they told the truth and they had repercussions for it and that were so terrible that they were like, you know, if I'm in a situation like this, you know, I'd rather tell a white lie and not hurt someone's feelings in their mind. But it happened to you and they lied to you. And you and you found out and you, you know, confronted them and they were like, well, I didn't want to tell you because I don't want to hurt your feelings. You're like, but telling me would have been better. But for them, their understanding of that type of situation isn't there and not saying what they did was right. I am not saying that. But having an understanding of where they're coming from may open your mind and may give you a different perspective. And then last but not least, everything is interconnected. If someone likes to wear, you know, I said this before, but if someone has to be perfect, you know, they're always uh, extremely well-groomed. And not saying well-groomed is a bad thing, but they have some, you know, who just can't walk out the house without being, you know, I got everything together, period. You know, they may have been someone who had a self-image problem because they were rejected in their youth. They could have been bullied when they were in high school. And so for them, that is a comfort. And you don't understand why they have to do the things that they do. You know, they have people who use social media to be their outlet. Maybe that's the only outlet they have. Maybe they don't have family and friends. And so their friends on social media, that is their outlet. Like, where do they put all their business on on social media? Maybe that's their outlet. 
We don't know what it is. Maybe that's their family because they don't have any. Maybe they're alone and they're lonely. Having an understanding of why people do the things that they do can really lead us to a level of uh, forgiveness for ourselves and for others. Um, they say, as an example, and this is to knowmyself.com, they say a friend uh, had an intense hatred toward her job. She used to explain how much she suffered every morning on the way to the office and how horrible she feels at the end of each weekend having to go back to her job. How many people does that sound like? You hate going to work. You're listening right now. You're like, you have your earbuds and you're like, I hate being here. You hate your job. You hate and you suffer every morning on your way there. Friday is like party, like thank God for five o'clock on Friday. And and Sunday evening is like, ugh, I got to go back there. You know, um, she goes on to say that whenever her friend told, you know, everyone about the problem that she had, they always gave her the same answer. Uh, be strong. Everybody has to work. Why do you have to be different? You know, everybody, we got to pay our bills, whatever, get over it. It is what it is. But she says, sadly, their answers reflect how poorly people really try to understand our family and friends. Do we really listen to our family and friends? That was part of the conversation yesterday. Do we listen to understand or do we listen to reply? Sometimes people are speaking to us. They are telling us their hurts. They are telling us, you know, how we can help them. But we aren't listening. We aren't understanding them. We are not being compassionate, you know. We want to understand people better. We want to uh, avoid common mistakes that people make when we're in these interactions. Because a lot of times we hurt people and we don't even realize that we hurt them. And then when you're hurt, it's like touching a stove, you're not going to touch it again. So if I reached out to you so that you could understand me better and you don't listen, how likely am I going to try that anytime soon? How likely are we going to try that anytime soon? You know, they say, be strong. Everyone's working. Why do you have to be different? Well, you know, that answer comes from a false belief and states that everyone is identical. While the truth is that each one of us sees the world differently. We all have different past experiences. We all have a different perceptions. Every one of us is different. We are not the same. We are not the same. We can all have the same experience. We can read the same book and get a totally different we can get a totally different, uh, yeah, if you have on, uh, I think we have Bobby for the last couple of minutes. We can all have a totally different perception of the same thing. I know y'all sent an email to a gr- or a group text, and then you had one person who took it personally, who called you on the side and kind of went off. And you're like, everybody else read it and took it this way. Why did you take it that way? Because we are all different. And having an understanding of that person or something that they've gone through can open your mind to living differently in the world. Do we have her on? Okay. We have the last couple minutes of Bobby. We had a little technical difficulties. Bobby, I'm really happy to have you. We have literally three minutes. We were talking about how everybody is, you know, everybody is is different. We are all not the same. And right. we, we expect there to be one, you know, uh, just just one cookie cutter way to deal with things and how if they right. don't do it our way, then it's wrong. Well, no, we need to be a little bit more understanding. Go ahead. Yeah, so understanding means that you have to understand that everyone is different. We all learn different. Um, you want someone to understand when you're trying to get something across. So you have to remember that, and you have to walk in someone else's shoes. That's called empathy. Mm. So understanding cannot happen if you're always thinking that, it's your way or the highway, hmm. and so you're going to lose out on a lot of opportunities. So understanding is critical along with communication, understanding and communication. So you have to sit down with people and not try and text, not try and send an email because there's going to be problems with that. You have to communicate and you have to sit down, reason together to have uh, a place to get in a real understanding. Absolutely, because you will have a lot of misunderstanding if it's a text or email, because everybody can digest it differently. Too many people are doing that these days, and what we're doing is we're shirking the responsibility to get a real understanding. And what I believe, a lot of people don't want to get an understanding. Ooh, say that one more time. (laughs) I truly believe that a lot of people do not want to get an understanding, because if you really do, you will get together, sit down, and reason it through. Because if you get an understanding, then what do you have to do? You have a responsibility, and they they don't want a responsibility or accountability. That's why I believe I leave really. 
You know, sometimes you turn you turn purple trying to uh, get someone to understand what you're trying to say, and they don't get it. It's not because of their cognitive um, abilities. It has everything to do with their stubbornness, um, you know, pride, self-righteousness. I don't want to hear what you got to say. I'm going to do what I want to do anyway. Hmm. Hmm. So you can't leave that out. So right. People don't want to get an understanding a lot of the time. Wow. And, and and if if that is you and you are listening, it's okay. That was yesterday. What are you going to do today moving forward? Now that you have an understanding of why you do what you do, what are you going to do? How are you going to change it? It takes action. We have to do something differently. And and one of the things is having conversation about it. Just getting it's a it conversation out. that people want to shirk eileen mm. they do not want to be wrong it's okay to be wrong it's okay to be vulnerable at times because the way the world is going out you have to have real connections you have to have real relationships because no one trusts anybody this really is the time in the season eileen mm. you know all the topics you've been doing is preparing us for what's to come and people are ignoring them so getting an understanding is very critical in this hour. You yes. have to link up with those that you're going to need in days to come. You know, it's, it's being uh, accountable, being responsible, being an adult. Hmm. I don't want to do that. Adults are right. not fun. <laughs> That's not fun. Who wants to be an adult? <laughs> right. And, and <laughs> I mean, let's all just look at ourselves today. Hmm. Everyone, let's just look at ourselves today and see if we're being accountable. You know, as an adult, we're trying to tell everybody what to do, but what are we doing? Let's look at ourselves today and not someone else. Wow. I'm going to go out on that. Let's look at ourselves today and not someone else. What are we doing to be accountable? What are what are we doing to have a better understanding of ourselves right. so that we can be better people, but also better teachers for our children, our niece and nephews, for everyone who is watching us? We are all exactly. being watched exactly, and duplicated. Exactly. They're watching. They're watching. They are. And not only that, we're missing out on opportunities. I'm going to tell you, some of you guys are missing out on business opportunities, friendships. You know, you're looking for that coin, and it, it probably just passed you because of the way you handled a situation, had no understanding. Wow. And if you want a better understanding of yourself, I implore you to reach out to Bobby Clark Alexander. You can find her on BeWhoYouBe.com, BeWhoYouBe.com. Bobby, give all of your uh, your tags. Yeah, you, they can also see me on Instagram at Bobby Clark A. Also, Facebook, Bobby Clark Alexander of uh, Pinterest, Periscope. I'm on all those social media outlets. And I know we only got a short dose of her today, but please follow her on Periscope. She gives these amazing, uh, I don't, I don't want to say lectures because it's not these amazing, uh, spiritual moments. These, these just amazing. It, it really sits in your soul. So make sure you follow her on Periscope. It is the good life. We didn't get enough of you today, but I'm telling you where you can find her right there on Periscope. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bobby, thanks so much for calling from the ATL. Y'all, let's just get another level of understanding and let's act on it so we can walk into the good life. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Eileen and I'm out.